It's clear, there are no clouds. It's just super stoked. Finally uh, getting to shoot the night with this lens. So I made it out here and of course it's completely socked in uh, with fog. I pretty much can't see a single star. Maybe if I get lucky and look straight up, uh, I might be able to see a star or two. So that's pretty, pretty damn disappointing. It sucks because the weather forecast said that it was going to be clear. Milky Way is supposed to be rising right now and uh, would basically be in my view, but um, that's probably not gonna happen tonight, uh, unfortunately. So tonight I'll be using Sigma's craziest lens design to date. This is the Sigma 15mm f1.4 DG DN diagonal fisheye art lens. Just like the 14mm f1.4 art lens that I reviewed last year, Sigma has yet again made a lens that we've never seen before. With a full frame field of view of 180 degrees from corner to corner and an f1.4 aperture, this new lens is the widest angle f1.4 lens ever made for full frame cameras. On initial glance, it's very similar to the 14mm f1.4 art lens that came out last year. And just like that lens, Sigma has designed this new 15mm fisheye with astrophotography in mind. It has the same exact features like a declickable aperture ring, an autofocus lock button, a manual focus lock switch, and a removable tripod socket with an ARCA compatible dovetail. And although it looks exceptionally similar in size, this new lens is even slightly bigger than Sigma's already monstrous 14mm. With 21 lens elements, it has two more than the 14mm 1.4, and that helps it tip the scale at just over 1.3 kilograms, or about 2.8 pounds. With a huge convex front lens element just like the 14mm, this 15mm fisheye has the same style cylindrical locking lens cap. As far as build quality goes, all I really need to say is that it's just like any other Sigma art lens. It looks and feels like the premium lens that it is. This lens, of course, brought me here alone in the dark on a cloudy night with nothing else to do but shoot photos and hope that the clouds might part and reveal some stars. My first few exposures were made just to familiarize myself with the lens. Straight away, I found the lens to be familiar to use, easy to manual focus, and sharp from center to edge. I was definitely a little bit nervous coming here at night, um, just because I've never been here before and the way my schedule worked out I had to uh, leave home at around 2 a.m. Uh, to get here at like 3 a.m. and with that um, you know arriving to a place that you've never been to in the pitch black um, at an odd hour of the night is you know it is never never really a comfortable situation to put yourself in um, 
I did as much research as I could ahead of time um, just to try and familiarize myself with the area and that definitely helped a lot. Um, you know, knowing where the parking area was and, and knowing which path that I wanted to, to walk down. So that ended up being really, really helpful. And now that I'm here and I've sort of gotten the lay of the land, uh, I am more comfortable being here and stuff, so. When I came up to this tree, it wasn't really obvious how to get up close to it because there's just a ton of brush and like bushes in the way. It's just really, really difficult to see exactly how to get through um, any of the bushes to get up close. Those palmetto bushes made for a really nice element to fill the foreground, but I also needed to focus stack nine separate frames in order to try and keep everything in sharp focus. Even though this is a fisheye lens, the depth of field is still quite short, and that creates its own challenges when the content of the frame ranges from only a couple feet away all the way out to infinity. Just to give you an idea of how short the depth of field can be, Here's a frame focused on the tree, which is about 10 meters away. And here's another frame focused on the foreground palmetto bush, which is just a couple feet away. Once I moved closer to the burnt out tree, a small opening in the clouds passed over me and revealed just a handful of stars for this one exposure. One of the major difficulties that a fisheye lens presents is that the field of view is so wide that it's really difficult to completely fill it up, um, especially in cases where you might have uh, really, really blank skies or kind of just like a boring flat foreground. You tend to have to get really, really close to your subjects. This ended up being one of my favorite compositions of the night, just based on the shape of the tree and the visual separation I was able to maintain between each of the branches. Although I wasn't able to capture any stars, I actually really liked the look of the light pollution from the two different colored lights and the reddish light that's being cast onto the tree from a nearby farm. When morning finally came around, I had a lot of mixed emotions about my first night out. I absolutely loved shooting photos of that burnt tree, and I feel like it was the perfect subject for this unusual lens. But I was also super disappointed that I couldn't capture that tree with the stars in the background. I shot a few more compositions in the blue hours of the morning, knowing that I had to try to return here on a clear night. I feel like if anybody uh, was out here watching me do my exposures, they'd probably think I'm crazy. I set up these long exposures, and uh, of course from now it's blue hour, there's like mosquitoes everywhere. So, do one exposure, you know, maybe like 10 seconds long, and I basically have to like dance and swat at the mosquitoes the entire time, just so I don't get, get bit. Um, so, I don't know, it just comes with the territory, it's pretty silly. My final capture of the morning ended up being my favorite. The tree and the low moving clouds above. 
and bright blooming trumpet flowers wrapped in a coat of sharp looking palmetto bushes below. All I can think about on my walk back to the car was how soon would I be able to return on a clear night? As it turns out, I was able to come back only two days later. All right, so I'm back out and uh, it's clear. It's clear, there are no clouds, maybe one or two in the distance. I'm just elated right now, <laughs> just super stoked. So, oh yeah, it, everything looks great um, out right now. I mean, you can see the stars shining in my shot. Um, so, happy to be out here and finally uh, getting to shoot the night with this lens. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun tonight. Okay, enough talk, let's get shooting. Right from here, in this spot. Let's try it out. Finally figured out my composition. Um, you can see I got some foreground in there. And uh, just framing up the tree, trying to keep it nice and balanced. This is kind of a tough position um, that I'm in because I'm basically right in these bushes right here. I got the tripod basically sticking like in between all the branches of this bush. So now I'm, I'm right in the position I wanna be, so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot. All right, here we go. First test shot, I'm happy with my focus, and I'm happy with the composition. I got everything level, and I'm aimed definitely a little up, so you can see there's just a little bit of curvature on the horizon line. Um, it's pretty natural looking though, because it's basically just all bushes. Um, so I don't, really don't mind it and uh, the interesting thing is that this very very uh, top part of the tree there that you see um, is actually directly above me um, so it, it, it's I'm getting like a you know at least a full 90 degrees from this point all the way up to, to about that that uh, fork um, at the very top of the tree there so just to give you an idea of like how wide of a field of view that I'm getting I'm real happy with the focus here. The corners look nice and sharp. Everything looks real sharp, so I'll get shooting. This is the shot that I was hoping for on my first night out here. I really wanted to be able to scrutinize the aberration performance of the Sigma 15mm fisheye, and as you can see, its rendition of the stars is basically perfect. Super sharp pinpoints in the center of the frame, and looking out to the extreme edges and the story is basically the same. This lens renders stars nearly perfectly. I ended up shooting about 15 minutes of exposures from this composition, and that made for an easy star trail stack of the southern sky. Now, the Milky Way is supposed to be rising um, and actually if you look behind me that star right there it's a little bit orange um, that is Antares and that's like the heart of Scorpio that's like one of the first uh, things that shows up right before the Milky Way rises um, it's a really colorful part of the sky it's got like the Rho Ophiuchi cloud complex there and it's pretty low on the horizon right now so I probably won't be able to see the Milky Way right away um, but hopefully within like half an hour here or so, I'll be able to get something. I'm a little afraid that it could cloud over because I do see some clouds forming over there to, uh, to the west. And um, so I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna set up here um, with the new composition to hopefully get that tree and the Milky Way rising behind it. Um, and that might be the last composition I have for tonight, so hopefully I can find something good and um, and we'll go from there. So it uh, should be pretty fun.
And there it is, my first photograph of the Milky Way Galactic Center in 2024. This is actually a frame pulled from a three and a half hour time lapse from 4 a.m. with the rise of the Milky Way Galactic Center until sunrise at about 7.30 a.m. When it comes to image quality, feature set, and build quality, there is very little that I can criticize about this lens. The Sigma 15mm f1.4 fisheye renders stars nearly perfectly, even at f1.4, and that makes it a nearly perfect tool for astrophotography. There are simply no other f1.4 lenses with as wide a field of view, and that makes this lens a standout tool for shooting the night sky. For the next time that I shoot a meteor shower, this is the lens that I want on my camera. A fisheye lens is a tool that I think often gets overlooked because of how it distorts an image, but I think that once you figure out how to utilize that distortion to your advantage, a lens like this opens up images that simply aren't possible with a rectilinear lens. I'll admit that I was a bit intimidated by the idea of solely using a fisheye lens for this project, but now that I've spent a couple nights shooting with it, I'm just enamored with the photos that I was able to capture with it. But just like the very similarly designed Sigma 14mm f1.4, I can't ignore the fact that the Sigma 15mm f1.4 fisheye is a very big and very heavy specialty tool. Now I'm certainly familiar with using large lenses when it comes to landscape astrophotography, but I'd be lying if I said that this is a lens that I will always keep in my camera bag, just because there are certain photography trips that I make where weight and pack size are at a premium, and making a fisheye lens one of my only tools for a trip is a constraint that I need to very carefully consider. We've never seen an autofocus, full frame, f1.4 fisheye lens, and I can imagine that no other manufacturer will ever make a truly comparable lens. So ultimately, if you know that a fisheye lens is a tool that you need, if you need the widest field of view possible for your camera with the best low light capability, and you're okay with a bit more weight in your camera bag, this is simply the very best full frame fisheye lens that you can buy for Sony E and Leica L mount cameras. Thank you to Sigma for lending me the Sigma 15mm fisheye for a few weeks before its release. And thank you so much for joining me on this two-night adventure of shooting with this crazy lens. I hope that you can join me again in the future for another night of shooting astrophotography at LonelySpec.com.